proceeds of bankruptcy and how it potentially can be um, worked. So what I need to do is is look at um, look at that. So I can't honestly I can't answer that at the moment. But more that we do on this, I hope to be able to answer those kind of questions in coming weeks. Okay. Um, oh, hello, Truth Matters. I can hear you. Yes. Can you hear us? Yes, I hear you now. Thank you. Hi, Frank. Hi, Hi. Truly. Hi, this is Greg Hi. and I. Know. I, Ron and I were talking this weekend about um, your glossary in Eucadia.com, and I'd never seen it before. That's a huge website. It's a lot bigger than I thought it was. <laughs> and um, yeah. we, when we found the definition of law, I compared that definition to Webster's 1828, law, uh, 18, 1828 American Dictionary of the English Language, and his definition of law in the etymology section of that dictionary was in Latin would translate lex. So my question to you is then, in our legal briefs and when we're addressing the courts, should we use the word lex in place of the word law, or should we use the word law in light of its uh, definition out of Eucadia? That is a fantastic question, because what you've just described is that law, L-A-W, firstly, as you know, when you go to court, it's all auricular. So it's what, it's what you say as sound, not necessarily what you write. Yes? Yes. And, and what you say when you say law is you are saying a definition that derives from lares, which is custom, customary law. Yeah? That's how I see as a, it. Yeah, as opposed to lex. That's an excellent question. Um, I, I think you. I think if you used lex, um, the only problem is, remember, we, we, it's hard to discern with judges whether they're just being stupid or they are stupid. Right? Yes, that's clearly evident. And and and. It's it's like picking it's like picking uh, birds out of your socks, you know, on a on a spring day. It's hard to kind of work out what is a burr and you know what is just a bit of dirt. And uh, and I'm I'm struggling at the moment in into introducing anything more highbrow with judges because that's been one of the the constant complaints, if you like, about the ecclesiastical deed process these judges have got no idea of the ecclesiastical nature of their own courts. So, you know, when we get down to trust law, I know judges know that trusts are operating in their courts. I know they do. Yeah? Yes, they do. In, okay. in fact, in, go ahead. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. No, no, no. Go ahead, please. Okay, well, my, my brother is a 25-year attorney in the state of California, and uh, right. he's, he's the tops in his field in, in, in medical malpractice in the state. And he and I had a discussion three weeks ago or four weeks ago now on his drive home from work in Los Angeles, and I asked him if he understood that the law process that they were operating there through his bar association was ecclesiastical. He did not directly answer the question. He kept trying to divert it by asking me how I was making a living, and I kept reverting back to him with more questions as to specifically um, what what group controls most of the law schools in the country and in the, in the world? And he refused to answer the question. So finally I said him straight out and I said, look, isn't it clear that the Society of Jesus or the Jesuit order controls the preponderance of law schools and law libraries throughout the country and throughout the world? And that being the case, does that not tie in some way that there's an ecclesiastical process taking place in the court? And finally he kept denying it. Well, finally I asked him, I said, look, when you write your, Briefs and you ask for a remedy from the court, don't you say the word pray and prayer in your uh, uh, documents and don't you ask that to the judge? He went silent, went totally upset on me and told me he had to go in and eat dinner. Now, my brother has, is unflappable in a courtroom. He virtually never loses. And for him to get that nervous about what I discovered means that I, we have tapped into the core of the onion of their system. So if he knows yep. it's ecclesiastical, you can't tell me that the judges don't know it's ecclesiastical, they don't know it's trust law, and that they don't know the whole game that's going on. And what you said earlier today in the call, or I think it was maybe even last week as I listened to the calls over and over again after you finished them, um, that I believe that 
what they do is they try to play on our ignorance and to see if they can, like a, like a poker player like you used last week, yep. if they try to hit us with something that will divert us off track. And it's been my experience in the courtroom that when a judge tries to get a cadence going, I usually pause and calm we stop and take a pause. And I even tell him, I said, I need a moment to think about and reflect upon what you just said. And so when I do that, I throw him off his cadence. And so when I throw yep. him off his cadence, then I take control of the situation. And I've had attorneys in my closing arguments last April in a civil case, I actually quoted things that caused both the attorney and the judge to point their heads to the table because I embarrassed them so much as a part of them operating a corrupt system. So I know that if we just take our time and learn this, we can force them to acknowledge the truths that we know, which is that they are operating an ecclesiastical system, which, like you said, is the foundation for them, the trust being built upon that. And I believe that we have to hold our ground and force this stuff out because, again, my, my brother in 25 years will not argue with me on anything, but when I got him to get nervous about this particular issue, I realized that this is the core of the onion. And I just want to thank you for how you presented this and the, the issue of of the uh, sacrament of penance is so profoundly powerful because uh, Ron and I have discussed for years that that we only thing we do is we convict ourselves. In fact, I looked at the senior judge in my closing arguments in April, knowing full well I'd lost because I had testified against myself. I said the only evidence you've had in this case to rule in the favor of the plaintiff for the bank is the fact that I testified against myself and the way you had the rules rigged here. That was the only thing we could do here. So. And he, he, he even looked at me like with this, uh, with this kind of like devilish look on his face, knowing full well he got me. But, but you know, we, I learned from my experience. Sorry to go off on such a long story there. but No, 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 not at all. Look, it, I, believe it or not, what I'm doing, I'd say it's easy. It's not easy. <laughs> but the hard part is, is standing your ground because that's the, that's the thing that will change it. Nothing I've done will change anything. It will only change when people find resonance, people go away and prove it for themselves. Don't just simply take what I'm saying as gospel. Go and actually prove it, as yeah. which is what's happened to you, yeah. and stand your ground as a competent, honourable man or woman representing the law. That's when things will start to change. So good on you for the feedback. Thanks very much. Well, the last thing I just want to say is that the bailiffs now respect me in that courthouse, and I don't think any of them will arrest me at this point on because they've seen me stand my ground on issues they saw other people get run over like a freight train and they saw that finally somebody stood up to these corrupt bankers and judges. So anyways, it's worth standing up. Good on you. And uh, hopefully more and more people will, will f find the same. Good on you. We need it. Thank you. All right. Uh, Frank, can we get to a couple more questions real quick? Yeah. All right. We have Idaho on the line. Idaho, are you there? Um, yes, I can hear you. Yes, hello, Frank. Hi. My name's John. I've called you before, and a friend of Greg and a friend of Ron Davenport's, and I've got a, a terrible case that started in Southern California and is now up here in, in North Idaho. But what I have just found out about the case in Los Angeles County Courts is that the county of Los Angeles has been paying each of their state judges in the county courts about $50,000 a year, and they haven't lost a, basically a, more than a handful of cases in like five or ten years because they've been literally paying the judges when they're state judges. And yeah. my case involved, it was a probate case, but the, the probate was handled through the Los Angeles County. And so a uh, former U.S. District court prosecutor, Dr. Fine, uh, found out all this information, and he has disqualified five judges. I'm thinking, is that a, a process that I should go after to use it as a motion to void and vacate the, any judges, judgments and orders issued from the courts because the judges had received payment from the county? Well, I think this is fascinating information. And can I ask if it's something you, if you're able to communicate via email would be wonderful to, to read. Um, as I said, it, it's what, what makes things exciting when we're coming from the premise that we seek to be competent, we seek to be honourable, 
more importantly now, we, we have hopefully, and everyone is in agreement with this on the call and who listens, that we have an understanding of the base that we're dealing with. With all those things in place, you know, the thing that has struggled for many of us over years is, is the mercurial nature. We've never had a stable base to say, this is what it is. So the latest information you raised, I think, could, could help a lot of people. Uh, so yeah, by all means, please, if you can, if it's something relevant, it would be wonderful to share and, and, and know that whatever it is, and, and it can help, we'll definitely include it in the material and, and on the university. I'd be glad to forward the link. Uh, actually, uh, Dr. Fine uh, has a website, and he has his uh, briefs in PDF form that, that uh, he encourages everybody to, to download. Because basically what he has said, you know, five judges down, 405 judges to go to disqualify. <laughs> well, again, thank you for, for, the, for the information. And I'm sure many on the call and many who will listen will go and have a look. And, and this is what it's all about, is let, let's, let's help each other and let's build an army of competent, honorable men and women. Because that's going to change the law when yeah. those kind of people are going to those courts. Thanks again. Thank you, Frank. It's also what I what I found out here in North Idaho that the the judge has, uh, even though he's a state judge, he has received funds from the county to attend a, a drug court, and yep. they're in the process of uh, coming after my house with a sheriff sale. The sheriff being a county employee, but if the judge has received a personal benefit from the county, I'm thinking I can void his orders and judgment also that way. Absolutely. Look, um, it, it, we're dealing with incompetence and corruption and you've got to use everything um, as as people have put on the call and as, as we hear over and over again you know you you'll take this stuff and you can go to a court and the judge will ignore everything so you've got to use everything I mean these people uh, have have they truly believe that they are unstoppable and no one can touch them and including the including when we talk about Jesuit schools including the people that taught them I mean, these people are out of control. So that's why the information you've just mentioned, great stuff. Thanks again. Thank uh, you, John, could you, John, could you share the website for uh, Dr. Fine? I don't have it in, in front of me, but I will email it to Frank. I'm good friends with uh, Ron Davenport and also Greg Papa. So I will make sure that, that Frank gets it. It's, it's valuable information. Okay, yeah, great. And we'll, Thanks. And we'll, and, and we'll look at exchanging, see if we can get some of it up on U of U and ask if uh, we have permission to be able to do some of that as well. So thanks again. You're very welcome. Thanks. Just, uh, just, uh, Oops. My, my fault. Sorry about that, John. Oh, am I still on? Or? Yeah, you're, the, you're back. <laughs> just so everybody knows, what, what I have already done in my particular case, what uh, this Dr. Fine said to do is to email the county auditor and do it as like a freedom of information request and they will get back to you when you email them cc yourself that way they know that it's being tracked and the auditor of la county got back to me in about three or four days and basically said uh, yeah the the judges involved in my case down there uh have been receiving judicial payments and you know for a complete run you know it will cost some 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 time but that's uh, well worth it and i also emailed the auditor of our local Kootenai County up here, and he basically emailed back within a couple of days also saying that, yes, the judge had received payments. So you just have to do it as a public documents request, you know, via the each state will have a public documents request act or basically from the Freedom of Information Act. So we just have to find things out. Also what I have found out through the, our Idaho Secretary of State's office, the, the judge, <clears throat> In my case, uh, even though it's a, a civil case, his campaign treasurer is the county prosecutor. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. All on the Secretary well, of State's website. Yeah. It's, it's well, knowledge is power. Huh? Yes. Mm. What, what we are going up, so all I can say is to encourage everybody to do their research, find out as much as they possibly can about these scoundrels and then use it against them. Well, it's knowledge is power, and that's one of the things we want to build on, but, but uh, it's, again, great stuff. Thanks again for what you're doing.
thank you, Frank. Your your information, your sites have, have been very helpful, most wonderful, and um, I'm all, all for what you're doing. It is absolutely wonderful. Good on you. Great. Thank, thank you.